What is going on, beautiful bodacious beauties? What's happening? It is Friday. If you're catching the replay, what's going on? How you doing? Thank you so much for tuning in. I am excited to be here today. This is day six of Midlife Motivation May. This is the end of the affirmation series. And so you know, if this is gonna be the end of the affirmation series, that I have to go out with a bang. Affirmation conversation that we have been having this whole week. We started off last Friday, which was the first. And today's affirmation, oh, what did we have yesterday? You know what, I can't think of all the affirmations right off the top of my head. But I know we had, I am enough. Um, I am a powerful creator was one. I am, uh, I can't remember what the other ones were, but those are the two right off the top of my mind. Um, what, what was yesterday's? Yesterday's was a pretty good one. I, I can't really remember. That's what happens. 56, soon to be 57. Sometimes I walk in the kitchen and forget why, why I was even in the kitchen. So you know I can't remember what what yesterday's affirmation was. But today's is a doozy. Because if we're going to end the affirmation conversation, we're going to go out on a bang. And this is an affirmation that I tell you kicks most people's butt. Most people go to their grave never really having mastered this affirmation let me see what is going on because i need to be able to see who is saying what i see that we've got a couple people on but this facebook is um i don't know what what zuckerberg is doing and, and maybe it could be the reason why i have issues and i can't see the comments is because there are so many people online now because everybody's home that everybody's going live. And so Zuckerberg probably really needs to beef up his um, bandwidth. But you know how we do when we ain't really trying to spend no extra money, right? So I have, I'm have i here on my phone actually doing the live. And then I have my laptop here so that I can see the comments because for whatever reason on my phone. And this is a Samsung Galaxy 10 Plus phone um it doesn't allow me to see the the comment so please somebody comment so i can make sure that i'm not tripping just say hey linda happy friday linda what we talking about today linda something so that i can see, make sure that it is not my phone and um because you you just might not be saying nothing and which might be why i don't see any comments <laughs> But anywho, I am going to get started. So this is day six. This is the end of the affirmation series for this Midlife Motivation May. And I am going out on a bang with the I am a forgiving person and peacefully detach from all who have harmed me. Mm. I am a forgiving person and peacefully detach from all who have harmed me. So that means that I am cutting myself a loose from all those people who have harmed me. That means I am I am literally like chop, chop, chop. Like we done. I'm done with you having a chokehold on me. And I think that forgiveness, one of the reasons why forgiveness is such a hard thing for most of us. Hey, Sarah Green Purtis. All right, so my comments are working. Okay, because Facebook has been tripping a little bit. So I've had to go live on my phone and then fire up my laptop, which is right here, so that I can see the comments. So what I've been doing is all week long, this is Midlife Motivation May. I don't know if you were aware of that. So all week long, I have been going live and talking about empowerment, self-development, um, inner work, all that kind of stuff. And I wanted to start off with affirmations because I think affirmations are so powerful. I really believe that affirmations have helped a lot of people just literally change their life, turn their whole life around. I know it's really worked for me and I didn't believe in affirmations in the beginning. I was like, how could uh, saying I am and then you know filling in the blank basically, how could that really help change anything? You would be surprised because if you think about it this way, if you grow up in a household where they're always telling you you're dumb and stupid and trifling and ugly and worthless and useless, 
Those are affirmations too. They're just negative affirmations. But flip it. And 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 grow and you're growing up in a house where they're telling you you're beautiful and you're special and you're smart and you're intelligent and you're a game changer and you're a conqueror and you are a champion. Positive affirmations, right? So they really do work. But it wasn't until I started doing oops self work myself that I uh, really understood the actual power of affirmation. So that's why I wanted to kick off the month of uh, May, Midlife Motivation May, with actual affirmations. So, um, let me see something really quick, you guys. Hold on. I know I should be more, um, more in tune than this, but hey, I am trying my best, trying to get all this stuff together. Okay, so... Oh, you know what? Maybe that's what it is. Hold on. Let me make sure. Okay. So, anywho, I wanted to end this week affirmation conversation with the most powerful affirmation, or one of the most powerful, and that's why it is, I am a forgiven person and peacefully detached from all who have harmed me. Woo! That's a rough one. That is a rough one. And I think it's really hard for us. Hey, Renee, I really think it is hard for us to forgive because nine times out of ten we think of forgiveness as letting someone off the hook and if you could really get that forgiveness is really a totally selfish act make forgiveness all about you make it all about you and you'll realize that you're letting yourself off the hook off the hook of someone else playing you like a puppet every time you think about them every time you see them you you want to cross the street and go the other way some of you guys have people who have you haven't forgiven that you're even going to church with so you don't even want to go to the same service that they go to because you don't want to see them and you are a christian right and you avoiding people in church because you haven't forgiven them so if you see that they go to the morning service you go to the uh early afternoon service you getting out of the choir because somebody did something to you in the choir. You are disengaging yourself from Bible study because, you know, they might be leading the Bible study and you don't want to deal with them, right? Just to go to show you how deep forgiveness can go. And it's not just for the, the people in the world. It's not for the weak. There are some very intelligent people who are stuck in a sea of unforgiveness. Like they are in quicksand, like they trying to get out holding on to stuff, trying to pull themselves out, but it's hard. It is hard, but it's necessary and it's possible. Yes, it is hard, but it's necessary and it's possible. And you are just one decision away from forgiving. I'm telling you, everything is forgivable. There's nothing that you can say or think of that is not forgivable. There's nothing that you can say because Forgiveness isn't about the act. Forgiveness is about emotionally detaching yourself from someone who you have voluntarily given the power over your life. I'm going to let you process that. It is about separating yourself. It's about snatching your power back that you have voluntarily given to someone. And here's the thing. You've got to clear all those weeds out. For, forgiveness is like having a garden, right? That has the possibility to really produce some awesome fruit and vegetables. But you haven't tended to the garden in a long time. And you go out there and this is what unforgiveness does. It literally takes a clean slate of just positivity, of good vibes, of good feelings, good thoughts, right? And literally suffocates them. And so you've got this garden that has the potential to produce great fruit. You have the potential to have a phenomenal harvest. Yes, it is, Sarah. But because you haven't tended it, because you haven't fertilized, because you haven't uh, went in and weeded it, because you haven't picked off the dead leaves, that's what unforgiveness does. It literally makes it where you can't even see opportunities that God is trying to, to present to you 
because your slate isn't clean, because you've got all that negative stuff, all those weeds, all that toxicity, all that pus. Like even when you have a sore, you got to let the scab do what it does. If you keep pulling the scab off, right? It never gets an opportunity to heal. That's what forgiveness is all about. But I really want you to understand that forgiveness, think of it as freedom. Just substitute freedom for forgiveness. Maybe that'll help. Maybe sometimes just that word sets people off because it's, it, it just has that connotation to it. So think about forgiveness as freedom. Freedom to go out there and, and live the life that you desire and deserve. Because see, when you are stuck in, 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 a, a, in a, a cage of unforgiveness, you have the key. But you don't even allow yourself the opportunity to unlock the cage because all you can see is the bars. You can't even see outside of the bars. And forgiveness is available to all of us. That's the beauty of it. Forgiveness is available to all of us, just like suffering is available to all of us. Most of us suffer by choice. Now, we'll tell ourselves, no, I don't. No, I don't, Linda. No, I don't. I don't suffer by choice. Yes, you do. Because life is all about choices. You choose to suffer or you choose to break free. Period. That's it. And there is nothing that has happened to you that is unforgivable. Nothing. So I want you to really take this to heart. I want you to understand that forgiveness gives you the opportunity to live the life that you said you would have lived had the bad things not happened. There's a lot of people, I've been to a lot of support groups, a lot of conferences, seminars, and one thing that a lot of people don't realize and recognize is that they have willingly given up their power because they're so stuck in what has happened that they can't see beyond that. They're so stuck in what has happened that they can't see that they have voluntarily giving somebody else power over their life who probably isn't thinking about them. And that's the saddest part. We go around not forgiving people thinking that they're actually thinking about us. Rotten people, that's what they do. They go around being rotten. So you are no special to them than the next person because that's what they do. They have been rotten to so many people that they have lost count because that's what they do. So if you're thinking that you unforgiving them or not forgiving them is, is making them lose sleep at night, is making them um, suffer, is making them have a horrible life, you are tripping, you're crazy, you're wrong, and you need to shake it off, get your life together, and, and get to forgiving. Because it's not about them, it's about you. It is about you. And, and, and you know, so many people, thank you for the love, will say, well, Linda, you just don't understand. I do understand. I understand that you could be living a fulfilling life, a life where you've tapped fully into your gifts and your talents, a life where you get to create this abundance that you want. If you would just take the key of forgiveness, unlock the cage, step out and realize all along that you've had the power. But so the question then becomes, what does unforgiveness do for you? What does it do for you? Because there's too many people out here stuck. Too many people out here just, I mean, anybody who'll listen, they'll run up to them and tell them about what, all this bad stuff that happened. Hey, Lynetta, girl, don't nobody care about that. I mean, I hate to say it, but people are living their lives trying to do what they do. They, they're not trying to hear all the bad stuff that's happened to you. Especially when, when they've said, oh, well, you know, you need to do this, 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 and this, and yet you continue coming around with the same old story. You have just decided that, you know what, ah, ah, forgiveness is just too hard. Well, have you tried? Because a lot of times we just think our way out of stuff. It's not based on nothing. It's based, or maybe it's based on what somebody said. Well, girl, I don't know, because girl, I don't know, because that forgiveness, oh, ooh, it is just hard. Based on what? Based on living in bondage? Based on... Um, not being able to soar based on living a mediocre life, forgiveness, trying to forgive someone, even attempting, you, you're trying to tell me that you would rather stay in bondage 
voluntarily, then see what freedom is like. Just give freedom a chance. That's what you're saying. Because that's a lie. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. And what's and what's really um, interesting about forgiveness is it really does free you up. I've had some really crappy stuff happen to me. And I was stuck. We've all been stuck. Some of us are still stuck. Some of us will die stuck. But you got to ask yourself this very important question. What does staying in pain and misery and despair and victimhood and helplessness and oh why meanness, what does that do for you? Like, why would you give this negative, low vibration energy? Yes, Lynetta, unforgiveness is heartache. Why would you give all that energy over your life? Why? And I'm going to tell you something that might, you know, curl some toes, might hurt some feelings. I don't care because, listen, I've decided that this whole month of May is all going to be about midlife motivation, midlife empowerment, midlife inspiration, midlife deep diving, midlife self-development. Is when you don't really feel worthy, it's harder for you to forgive. When you don't really love yourself, hey, Nadine, it's harder for you to forgive. Because, see, when you love yourself, you're not really um, feeling that negative emotion that, that you're drowning in. You know that there's better for you. Now, you may struggle. Let it go, right? You may struggle in your trying to forgive, but you wake up every day saying, you know what? I got to get this monkey off my back. I don't like how I'm feeling. I don't like how I'm acting. I don't like how uh, when I come around people, I can visibly see the look in their eyes and their face because they're responding to this negative energy that I am exuding. Because when you're holding on to all that mess, it shows you may think you're fooling the people, but you're not. They might not say anything to your face, but they are saying stuff like, girl, gosh, every time she come around, it's like that boy in, in, in the peanuts who had that cloud on him and it was raining. Like, is it raining? No, it's not raining. But every time she come around, I feel some sprinkles. It's like that song Erica Badu had called Bag Lady. That, that song wasn't about designer purses. That song wasn't about knapsacks and backpacks. That song was about dragging all that baggage around. It was about everywhere you go, people see all that stuff. They feel all that stuff. And you're wondering why ain't nobody trying to be around you. Because you're negative, you're toxic, you're draining. No matter what, what happens, it always comes back around to your sad story and what happened to you. Ain't nobody got time for that. Everybody has something that has happened to them. Every single person in the world has something. Now, you might try to out, uh, outdo them and say, well, yeah, 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 girl. Well, you might have been through something, but, let me, but can you top this? Girl, please, bye. Nobody ain't trying to hear that. So what I want you to do is get really selfish when it comes to forgiveness. Make it all about you. Every last single piece of it, make it about you. Make it about your freedom. Make it about your happiness. Make it about you getting the opportunity to live the life you finally want to live. Make it about you making a choice, a decision that with the rest of the years that you have left in your life, they're going to be the best of your years. That yeah, you may have given a lot of time, a lot of energy to the heartache and the pain, but you decided no more. No more. I'm done with that. I'm done with that. So you're saying, Melinda, you know, it's really not that easy. No, it's not. But it's worth it. Forgiveness is not easy. I'll be the first one to tell you it's not easy. And guess what else? It's an ongoing process. Like you don't say, okay, I'm forgiven. And moving on, no, every day you got to pray on it. You got to meditate on it. 
You got that journal on it. You do what you have to do, but you have elevated yourself and you've made a choice and a decision that you are not going to let it have a chokehold on your life, that you are cutting the strings. You are no longer going to be a puppet to whoever hurt you, to whoever dogged you out, to whoever did you wrong. You decide that no, it stops here. It stops with me. You no longer have power over me. You've got to get in in, in the boxing ring of life and duke it out sometimes. And every single day you might have to get in that boxing ring of life and duke it out so that you can continue to keep your vibration high and keep that forgiveness, unforgiveness monster off your back because it, it, it keeps coming back. It keeps coming back. It keeps coming back. It don't stop. It won't stop. But you can build yourself up in such a way that you see it coming, you can smell it coming, you, you know what it looks like, what it feels like, what it sounds like, and then you just keep building up your armor and before you know it, it's like, girl, please, you'll be able to talk about it. You know what I mean? Because I really do believe that a lot of the things that has happened for us is not even for us. It's for the other people out there who haven't quite gotten to the point where we've gotten, where they've gotten to the point where they can forgive, where they can actually look at what has happened to them, dissect it and say, okay, yep, that did happen. But I'm not going to be a victim no more. I'm, I'm, I've, I've made a choice that I'm going to be a champion, that I'm going to be a victor. Not everybody is there. So when you can elevate yourself, now you can help the next person get it together. And then they can help the next person and get it together. And that's what it's really all about. These are all lessons, thank you for the heart, that God has given us so that we can go out and help the next person who isn't quite where we are yet in their journey. That's what this is really all about, all of this stuff that happens. And I mean, I can say some really radical things, um, but I'm just going to leave it at today's affirmation. And it's so long, I have to read it. I am a forgiven person. And, and peacefully detach from all who have harmed me. I am a forgiving person and peacefully detach. Because some of us, you know, we'll cuss a person out. That's not peacefully detaching. You have to peacefully detach. It's not about cussing them out. It's not fronting them off. That's not it. You have to peacefully detach so that you can have freedom. Look, think of forgiveness as freedom. And we all have the key at all times. We've never not had it. It's just whether we choose to use it or not. And if you look at forgiveness like that, as you already having the key, just some of us not ready to be free. Nothing else explains it. If you are still not forgiving, it's because you're not ready to be free. And that's what you need to examine. Like, why am I not ready to be free? Why am I voluntarily holding on to all this pain? Why am I voluntarily holding on to all of this pain? Because I want to be free I want to have the opportunities that this unforgiveness is not affording me because I'm so stuck in this pain and this chaos and these trials and these tribulations that I spend all my time emotionally and spiritually and physically dealing with this crap that the goodness and the opportunities and the blessings that God has for me, I can't even see. Because I'm still dealing with stuff that happened 35, 40 years ago. What? Is that what we doing? We can't see and get to the obstacles. Get to the butterflies and the unicorns and the rainbows. Because we over here in the swamp. In this trash. In this trash heap. In this funkiness. And we see. The unicorns and the rainbows and the butterflies. But we choose to be over here in the swamp. You got to ask yourself, why is that? You got to ask yourself, why is that? When you could be free, 
to pursue opportunities, when you can reinvent yourself, because no matter what has happened to you, you still get to choose who you be, even having been through all that. So, so instead of being in, in, in the swamp, you could have freedom. You could be pursuing opportunities because you're no longer in the rut and stuck in that mess. You could be reinventing yourself. You could be showing God just how grateful you are for pulling you through. You got to imagine what life could be like on the other side. You can't imagine when you stuck. Because as soon as you wake up, just like that song Billy Holiday said, Good Morning Heartache. That is the song that you sing every single day. Wake up. Good morning, heartache. Good morning, pain. Good morning, trials. Good morning, tribulations. Good morning, suffering. That's what you're doing. And I make it sound kind of, you know, funny because I really want you to understand how silly it is at the end of the day not to forgive. Like you really hurt another person. But listen, I can see how easy it is because we're not taught. You know what I mean? We're not taught. Like they don't teach self-development in high school. You know, our parents did the best they could. Some of us saw our parents holding on to stuff, having grudges. And so we learned that. But you can unlearn it. And be real selfish with your forgiveness and understand it is all about you. Whatever you need to do to forgive, that's what you do. I, I choose to see it as a selfish act. It's all about me. It's all about me letting me off the hook. Bump them. I can care what they're doing. I need to be off the hook so that I can be free, so that I can pursue the opportunities that all of this negativity is blocking, consuming my mind with foolishness. With stuff I can't even change. I mean, I can see if you can change what has happened, but you can't even change it. So we're just wasting all this time with stuff that we can't even change. And what we can create, we don't have no space in our mind for that because it's clouded with all this mess. And then we wonder why our lives aren't how we want them to be. And then we get mad about that. We get mad about the lives that we're living. We get mad about the fact that we can't forgive. And we don't even see any correlation between all that negativity clouding our minds. It's not even allowing us to be the creative um, people that, that God created us to be. It, it, it doesn't even allow us to tap into our gifts and talents that we have, that we've been blessed with. Because we're dealing with all this toxic foolishness. So if you think of forgiveness as freedom, giving you the opportunity to create the life you want to have, for you to reinvent yourself, for you to be grateful for for coming through if you're alive you might as well thrive if it didn't kill you whatever it was then you might as well get on with, with living instead of having that uh living dead type of life so freedom opportunity to pursue what you really want to do live the life you really want to have allow you to reinvent yourself see when you forgive you reinvent yourself show god that you're grateful Imagine, it, it, it allows the imagine muscle to get, get back in tune so that now you can imagine a different life for yourself and then get out there and start creating it. It allows you to no longer be a victim, which means you might have to change your tune because so many people are used to being victims that that's all they talk about is what happened to them. So now you might have to kind of figure out what else you're going to talk about. But that would be a good thing because people are tired of hearing about what happened to you. And then you can empower yourself. That's what forgiveness means to me. Freedom, opportunity, reinvention, gratitude, imagination, victor, and empowerment. That's what it means to me. So... I hope this has been a good message for today. It is a phenomenal day. I woke up, so I'm always on the right track when I wake up. It's phenomenal Friday. It is day six of the affirmations. They will be, I'm going to upload everything up into the unit section. So if you missed day one, you can go back. You can, um, you can uh, come up with your own affirmations. Like these are ones, I, I wrote this one out. 
Um, and so that's why I didn't remember it by heart. But, but remember, this is, I am a forgiving person and peacefully, the, the, the word, the magic word is peacefully, detach from all who have harmed me. You got to be peaceful about it because you can cut somebody out and detach from them, but that's not quite what we're trying to do, okay? So thank you for listening. Again, check out the unit section of the group, and I'm going to have, I think, one, two, and three. Day one, two, and three are already there, so I'll put four, five, and six so that, you know, you can go through those and um, come up with your own affirmations, and then I will leave you with this. Who, and this isn't a question that you answer for me, this is for you, but who do you need to really, really forgive? Not that surface forgiveness. Because again, like I said, you'll know if you've forgiven them if you, you, you know, you, you know, we all know. I'm not even going to go into that. We know, we've grown, we're 50 and over in this group. We've lived a while, we've got some wisdom. So who do you need to forgive? That is what I will leave you with. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy the group. It's Funny Friday as well. So if you've got a funny um, meme or something, put it under the Funny Friday uh, post. And I will see you guys later. Ta-ta!